like this down in the water, watch the mud rise up. Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter, pour me in your cup. Should've known we'd bring trouble, and trouble gonna find you here. Trouble. I was one way when you found me, I was not the one you see. And the only thing that happened was this stranger in between. And you can say your eyes are open, you might think your hands are clean. Till the wind blows in, the dirt kicks up in ways you've never seen. I'm scraping the bottom, make my well run dry Shake them coins, I know where you got them Kiss me, kiss me, bye I should have known we'd bring trouble Trouble gonna find you here Yeah, trouble Stranger in between You can say your eyes are open You might think your hands are clean Till the wind blows in The dirt kicks up In ways you've never seen Yeah, trouble Yeah, trouble Here we go. Hello, are we sounding good? Everything's good? Getting the nod? All right, we are good. Oh man, this is fun. Why? Look at this background. This is not a fake Zoom green screen background. I am talking to you from Utah here at Angel Studios. My first live stream from Angel Studios. And you might see a few people in the background. We came in to do this live stream and uh, bring this to you and Angel Studios. They are our distributor. They are the ones responsible for your app that you hopefully will have downloaded by now. And if you haven't, then I'm not, I don't apologize for shaming you into it. You need to get the app. The app is the best place to watch all of the episodes. It's the best place to see it and hear it. The quality is great. You can connect directly to your streaming device, Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, uh, Chromecast, you know, just this is the way to watch it. But if you are watching on YouTube right now, welcome. And while you're watching right now, go ahead and say something in the chat. Just say where you're from, whatever it is, because as you comment in the chat, it activates and it starts letting YouTube know, wow, this is something that people are wanting to watch and it gets it in front of more people. And like I say, every time we have so many subscribers and followers on our YouTube channel and people who have watched the show for the first time because it showed up on their feed in YouTube. And the same is true of Facebook. So if you've got a question, you can ask it. If you've got just anything you want to say, even if you just want to write the number one, that helps activate. So thank you for doing your part in that. You don't need to do that in the app. In the app, we already, you know, we already know you're here, but anything you can do on YouTube, hit that like button. That really does make a 
difference. You hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I know I say it every time, but it's true. It really does get our channel in front of more people. So thank you for partnering with us in doing that. That really does mean a lot. So here's what we're going to see tonight. We got a lot. I'm going to go through it quickly because I don't want to keep you here all night long, but we got a lot to cover. So I've got to show you, I'm going to be showing you some new and some returning gift items. I'm going to be showing you a awesome, I mean, this is really cool. It's emotional. It's enlightening, but we're going to give you the heart of season two. We've got, we put together, we interviewed all the cast. Uh, we got tons of B-roll from the set. There's tons of footage from the set that you haven't seen before. A lot of insights on uh, the Sermon on the Mount, a lot of insights on uh, what the actors were thinking during these scenes that we were filming in season two, but this is really much, this is really going to give you a beautiful insight into the heart of what season two is all about. So we're going to be showing you that. I've got a conversation with Elijah Alexander, yes, Atticus, and does he eat an apple or not in his conversation? You're going to have to watch to find out. But uh, I know that you, uh, we, we have so many fans of of Atticus, and it's so, he's so intriguing, and so we talked to Elijah about that, and we've also got updates on. Uh, season three, what's going on with season three right now. We've got updates on what we're calling hashtag, I got to remember I say this right, hashtag F5K, feeding of the 5,000, uh, Lofapalooza, uh, as, as we're calling it, um, because this is where we're actually going to get to act out and see and portray the feeding of the 5,000, that uh, Bible story that essentially in many ways launched this entire show. And uh, some of you are going to actually be there. And some of you have an opportunity to be there. So I'm going to talk all about that, give you all these updates. So I'm here in Utah. Why am I here in Utah right now for this? Well, we are filming a lot of our Christmas special. Remember our Christmas special last year that we did? We've got a Christmas special coming up again this year that is going to be off the hook. Uh, just last night, uh, some point this week we've did, we did, we've done, let's see, I'm trying to remember what happened last night, but during this week we've gotten so many amazing bands that we've been filming on the set. Uh, you know, we've got Four King and Country, we've got Matt Mayer, Phil Wickham, uh, the Bonner family, remember them from last year when they did Oh Holy Night, which was so extraordinary, they're back, Jordan Felice, uh, the Torwalds, uh, I mean, I, uh, Maverick City Music, uh, Kane, We the Kingdom, we, I, I'm not even remembering everybody, but we've got, some, we've got an extraordinary Christmas special that we're putting together, and it is just amazing, and I cannot wait to bring it to you. And uh, this week we also filmed uh, some monologues with some of our actors. Uh, it's just going to be awesome, awesome. So that's why I'm here in Utah right now. And uh, I, I'm just, I'm, the reason I'm talking about it now is I'm just giddy about what you're going to see. And we have a huge live stream coming up next month to talk more about that, give you interviews with, the, with uh, some of the artists, and uh, talk about the opportunities that we have with this Christmas special. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, as you know, I always like to remind you of why we do this show. And so before I talk to you about some of the new gift items we have, I want to just read this for you very briefly. We got a note um, from um, uh, Jimmy Ray Roberts is, is his name. And he says this, My son Drew and I recently finished watching seasons one and two, and we loved it. The Chosen is such a blessing. Drew, who has cerebral palsy, has never cared about watching TV. And I didn't think that watching The Chosen would be any different. I'm excited to say I was wrong. He listened and watched each episode with an interest that I have seldom seen. You brought Jesus to life and made him into someone that Drew could relate to. <laughs> That's so awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a blessing you have given both of us. This is Drew pictured wearing his new shirt. You can tell by his smile how, his, how excited he is to wear it. Thank you again, and we can't wait for season three. God bless. It is extraordinary how much this show has broken through some of the barriers that people often have, whether it's cultural, whether it's language, whether it's age, and yes, the special needs community, of which, which is very near, near and dear to my heart as it's very prominent in my family. And I've also, my wife and I have done a lot of work in the special needs community, but because this show is a relatively complex show and sometimes it can be difficult for someone with special needs to make sense of all of, of those kinds of television shows, and yet, for some reason, and I believe it's because we've stripped everything away and just focused on Jesus, it just breaks through. And we have heard from so many people in the special needs community, whether it's connecting with, with Matthew or whether it's just the fact that they just love connecting with Jesus, it has really been extraordinary. And you have such a huge part of that. It's why you pay it forward. It's why you purchase the gifts. This opportunity that you have to 
keep this going. Um, I just wanted to remind you of what you're doing and the impact that it's having is really, really beautiful. So I'm gonna, I've got a few things. I really want you to pay attention because there's lots of things I'm gonna bring to you. We are not launching a new shirt this time around. Uh, one of the reasons is because right now, all over the world, there is a shortage of material. There is long shipping delays. It's really been uh, difficult. It's, it's, we're trying as best we can to keep shipping costs down. We really don't want to um, make it difficult for you to get these gift items, but it really is proving difficult. And we, uh, some of the colors we wanted for the next shirt uh, are just not available currently, and we do not want to launch anything ever that we are not thrilled about and that we do not believe is going to be impactful. So, but we do have some new things and all of them are limited quantity, okay? Because of the limit, limitations and materials and all that, I'm sure even wherever else you're shopping, sometimes you'll find that your size isn't available. We're doing everything we can. So first things first, this is new. This has been requested probably as much or more than anything else that we've, that we've gotten. And uh, finally we have a small number of these, so you're going to have to do this quickly if you want it, but look, the chosen bag. I personally, I'm going to be honest, okay, because I'm always authentic. I couldn't care less about a chosen bag. You're not going to see me walking around wearing this, so you're not going to see a video with Dallas like, you know, look, new chosen bag. No, this is, this is not for me, but this was requested so much that, uh, you know, what do they call these? Like a... Is this, not, is, Tote bag, yes, thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Tote bag, so I don't have a tote bag. My wife sometimes has one. So uh, dudes, I don't know if this is for you or not, but we get, I mean, finally I just broke. I was like, okay, fine. We, it, it gets requested all the time, and I actually do think this looks great. Um, it's, the, it's the infamous chosen teal, uh, our, our, fa our favorite color, and the, uh, the logo is on both the, against the current logo. We do only have a limited number, so that's not a, that's not a joke. There are, there, we, we can only print so many, so you better get that quickly. And guess what's back? Guess what's back? Back again. Backstreet's back. If you're a Backstreet Boys fan, remember that song? The teal hoodie and the teal zip-up. Okay, so the teal hoodie and the teal zip-up, personally my favorites. I mean, I love this color. It's got the, against the current on the back, this is not the, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not Vanna White right now, I'm not doing a great job of presenting this, but um, look at that. If you, got, if you got the teal hoodie and the bag all at once, I mean, look at how much you'd be matching. Again, I don't care about the bag personally, but I know you do, but this is awesome color, and again, limited edition because we don't have too many of these. Um, it took months and months for us to get this new, uh, th th this new material, and because teal is, is in short supply, literally. So um, get it quickly. Um, and look what else we've got now. Back. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this again, to be honest with you. But uh, the pandemic coming back, it's been coming back in, in, uh, in, in many ways and worse than before. And kids are being forced to wear masks uh, to school. And uh, I mean, I travel a lot. Every time I travel, I have to do it. And if you're going to do it, if you're going to wear the mask, I know some of you don't ever want to wear a mask fine. But if you do, this is the awesome one. Okay. I, I'm telling you, this ear hole gaiter is so comfortable. I, I, I honestly forget I'm wearing it. And because of the ear holes, when I want to actually show my face to someone, which is, you know, most of the time, but uh, I can literally just like that and it's still there. It's just so, so convenient. So when I'm on set filming and we have to wear the mask because we have to be in a bubble, uh, we pass these out to our cast and crew and they all say this is like by far the most comfortable you know, just down. And then if you want, you can do that. But the ear hole gator mask is back. Um, so look, again, I wish we didn't have to, but if you're going to do it, you might as well have make a statement. We've also got other masks still, and we got the youth masks now that say binge Jesus on them. So, uh, you know, a lot of schools are requiring it for the kids. And so again, if the kid is going to have to wear one to school, might as well say something that's a call to action. And so we've got tons of kids wearing now these Binge Jesus masks. We've got several versions of the Binge Jesus mask on the, on the, on the, on the chosengifts.com. www.thechosengifts.com. How did I forget to sing that song? The song that I know you're all waiting for. And Cameron behind the camera right now is, he almost fell asleep. It was such a dulcet lullaby. And so, uh, 
Anyway, thechosengifts.com is where you're getting all this stuff. And I know I'm bringing a lot at you, but because we didn't have a new, brand new shirt, I'm like, all right, I, we got to bring them a, a lot of new things that we can, as many new things as we can, and some returning things I'm about to share with you. But thechosengifts.com is where you get all this stuff. But we've got to look for those Ben Jesus masks, because if you do have to wear one, if your kid has to wear one, you might as well be saying something that's a conversation starter while they're looking right at your face. Okay, so the teal hoodie's back, the uh, limited edition bags, again, they are, there, there is only a small, small number. So when you get there to the site, and if you, I'm telling you, these bags and these teal hoodies, like, people absolutely love them. So if you find that it's out of stock in your size, or that the bags are gone quickly, I'm sorry, we did our best, but uh, you'll just have to be patient for the next batch. The Chosen Army shirt. I don't have it with me right now. I forgot to bring it with me to Utah, so we're going to put up an image of it. But the Chosen Army shirt was was uh, here for a limited time a year ago, and we've had so many people who have joined the Chosen Army. So on Facebook, if you look up Chosen Global Army, so go on Facebook and look up the Chosen Global Army, it's a Facebook page where um, it's unlike a typical group. We're, you, you can't post yourself, but we give you these tasks. We give you an opportunity to be a soldier in the Chosen Army. We say, look, here's what we really need you to do to support the show or to partner with us or to spread the word. And so we, we give you an update or two every week. And so we had so many people who were wanting to kind of identify themselves as a member of the Chosen Army. So we've got those back. Again, limited supply. Um, because that color is tough to find, and so the Chosen Army shirt is back in the store, uh, and, and as soon as it's gone, it's gone. So all of these things, limited supplies, because that's how the state of the world right now. So the Chosen Global Army is a really, really great way for you to identify yourself, and people do oftentimes say, what, what is this? What is the Chosen Army? And it's a great conversation starter. But all, for the most part, if you get to see someone in public who's also got that on, it's like a powerful move. Um, so finally, why am I wearing this Trouble hoodie? even though uh, in Utah it's actually relatively warm. I don't need to wear a hoodie, but this is, we are heading into fall. Trouble, we are retiring it tonight. Okay, so if you are watching this live, you have until essentially, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it open, you know, through, through the night, but consider midnight tonight essentially the, the cutoff. If you're watching this Monday or Tuesday, there's a good chance it's no longer there. We are retiring our hoodie gear. Um, we've got only so many things we want to keep in the store at once. Our dear, dear partners in Texas, uh, Effortless Branding, our, our dear friend Brett Parker, who handles our merch, handles our, not merch, sorry, didn't mean to say that, handles our gifts. Um, you know, he's got this great warehouse, but we can't keep everything in there. So we've got, as we're adding new things, we've got to take some things away. And so we are losing our trouble gear. If you have not gotten the trouble gear, first of all, the color is awesome, if I do say so myself. It's what it's color-wise, along with the teal, it's probably my favorite. It's bright, and this is something that just says such a unique message. This is kind of represents what the show is about. We're troublemakers in a good way. And that great moment at the end of season one when Jesus and the disciples are walking in slow motion with that song Trouble, again, the full-length version of the song Trouble, full-length version of the song Trouble, is in the closing credits, very at the very end of the closing credits of season two, episode eight. So if you haven't heard it yet, the full-length version, and it's going to be coming out soon as a single, I promise you. <sighs> I'm just excited about that song. But Trouble is what, not only what Jesus and the disciples faced and what we sometimes face, uh, but also, we like to give a little trouble in the good way. So this shirt represents the heart of the show in many ways. I mean, it's a good thing, and we're trying to be, we, we of, of course, always want to be gentle and meek and loving, but we're also stirring up the waters a little bit. We're causing a little bit of trouble in the good way because things are different. We're creating something that's different, and that's what Jesus did. So the trouble gear always has been one of my favorites, but it is being retired tonight, so make sure you get it. And I know there's other things you want too, but tonight is an extravaganza. So all these things are limited supply. All of these things are going away. But this is the thing that's going away tonight at midnight. So do it. Get the trouble stuff. I promise you. It's a great conversation starter because it's so unique. It's like gives you an opportunity to really talk about what we mean by that. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes, we've got the chosen. And I'll have uh, Colin, if you can, right now, like be putting this stuff up as I say it. But we got the chosen army t-shirt and hoodie. All right, so the Chosen Army stuff, which will be until we, we'll, we'll have it until we, until it's gone. We've got the bags. I'm going to, in fact, Colin doesn't need to put that up. I'm going to show it to you one last time. Chosen bag, the Chosen tote bag. The teal is back. Awesome. The, uh, the where did, what did I do with my mask? Oh, here it is. The gator mask, which is so comfortable. Now, why, do my, why am I doing this? I, I, I feel compelled to say this every time. 
Oh, and then of course the trouble gear that we're retiring. Why do I do this? This is really important. I really want you to hear this. I read that note to you before I started talking about all of our gifts. The gifts are just a tool along with our books and our DVDs and all of those things that are meant to take you deeper into the show. They're meant to take you deeper into the gospel. They're meant to be conversation starters. We have peer from people all the time who some shirts more than others, but some of our shirts really do start conversations. And that is really the goal. Now, why don't we just give them away free like we do the show? Well, of course, it costs a lot of money to put all this material together, but this is literally what allows me to talk to you. We are able to finance these live streams and our YouTube channel and give you all of this extra content. All of that comes from the sales of the gifts. And it also allows us to do more episodes and seasons. All of this allows us to, I mean, we're building this, this organization internationally. I mean, our staff right now, our staff, the chosen staff, just literally went to 20 full-time people in the last couple of weeks. 20 full-time people. All of that is paid for by the gifts. We don't take anything from pay it forwards because the pay it forwards go, to, well, well, here's what I mean by that. I want to make sure I'm clear. Of course, we take something from the pay it forwards, but that all goes to production as much as we can. And of course, some of, it, some of it goes to marketing, some of it goes to overhead for our distribution partners and all that stuff. But the, money, the, 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 portion, the portion of that that goes to the chosen specifically, the chosen LLC, that goes into production. The staff, the equipment, all of that stuff is financed fully by the gifts. And so that allows us to get this out to more people. It allows the conversations to be started. We're trying to keep the cost down as much as humanly possible, but uh, because we really want to encourage you to do that. We want to encourage you to buy gifts. We want to encourage you to give it away. But uh, that's why I do this every time. It allows us to keep going. So thank you for that. All right. So what I want to do is... I want to give you this documentary right now. This is the heart of season two. After the documentary, uh, after um, we show you kind of this inside look at season two and the heart of it, we're going to talk about uh, the feeding of the 5,000 opportunity, Lofa Palooza, hashtag F5K. Um, we've got some people coming in. It's okay. There's, there's still some people who show up and uh, even, even on a night like this. And um, we've got, I'm going to give you the update on season three, the funding of it and the writing of it. Cause right now season three is being written. So I'm going to give you that update. And, uh, we've also then after that got the update on the season two DVDs, season two DVDs finally out. And, uh, and, and there you're starting to get them. So I'm going to give you all those updates. And then we've got the conversation with Elijah. So right now let's go right into it. The season two heart of the chosen. I can't wait for you to see this. It's really beautiful and don't go away. Because when we come back, I got a, a, several more things for you. Talk to you soon. I believe that the show has a higher calling. I just think this is going to be a game changer. The show's not about me, it's about God, it's about how he impacted the world. Jesus is playing a whole other game. And we go out and they're all screaming for all of us. It felt like we were rock stars. Comparing season one to two, we've leveled up like... Now, season two is about the consequences of the publicity that surrounds Jesus and his followers. And are these followers ready for it? It's all fun and games when Jesus calls you and you feel so uh, empowered and excited and humbled to be called by Jesus. But then when the trouble comes, are you ready for it? Disciples are heading into Samaria for a few days to stir up some trouble, create some, a little bit of a holy chaos, as it were. James and John aren't too pleased about doing that. They're not too fond of the Sumerians. This isn't like you thought, you think it's gonna be easy to stand right alongside Jesus, but you're gonna to have to go through this village and you're gonna to have to face these issues that you've got in, inside you. And James and John aren't too fond of the Sumerians. And so there's that trepidation of, my goodness, I so badly want to be right next to Jesus, but there's like some lava I have to cross to get there. Don't lift a finger. That was a warning. Try it again. And see what happens. Quiet, Big James. Shalom to you, too. Or, uh, Big James and John are, are kind of 
uh, trying to lead the group and trying to basically say, you know, this is kind of the way we should go about it. I don't know if I'm, I want to be the leader as much as I don't want to be told what to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I just, the whole situation of other people telling me what to do, I think, uh, is just new, you know? That's the errand. Oh, yeah? That's the errand? Yeah. You guys are really enjoying this, being in the know, huh? <laughs> Coming from you, Simon? What does that mean? There's nothing more at the surface than the relationship between Simon and Matthew. That tension is, in many ways, a representation of tension for all of the disciples. And he said that we would stay here for two days, which means over 24 hours, the number of men we need to reach per hour is 83.33333333. Yeah, what's 0.33 of a man? Matthew? Simon. We're starting to see the egos come into play here, which is very, very human, especially when you get a group of that size. You know, there's like a honeymoon phase, and then, <laughs> and then people start to get to know each other and get to irk each other, and, and, uh, and Jesus is in the middle of it going, ah. I can't forgive it. I'll never forgive it. All right. You said what you needed to say. Sit down, Simon. You sit down first. Good night. All of the contention, the bickering, the fighting, the differing points of view, that was like a feast to me. I was so excited. I'm enjoying the frustration and confusion. I want conflict. I want dilemma. I want uncertainty because it's just fun to play and to explore as a human being and as an actor. And that's where the humanizing aspect of it comes in. Like you see all these people and what I think all of us love is, what I love is that they're not perfect. But I think it's important to show how, how you can manage it and how you can work through it and how important it is to have loving people surrounding you and how they can help you in that and, and how to reach out to them when you need it. And hopefully this show will cause us and this season will cause us to give grace to each other. Wow, before we even start, before we even find our new group dynamics, new people are joining in. Each person brings an entirely different energy and pulls in a different direction, so the group is kind of shaping. Well, we knew that for season two, we had a huge task ahead of us, which was the team's not complete. And how to, so how do you assemble 12 disciples? How do we keep this thing interesting when we're picking up disciples that aren't really famous for much? Like the, the famous ones, you know, so a bunch of stories are told about them, like Simon and John and Big James and Matthew a little bit and for sure Thomas. But we only have these like little fragments about people like Philip and Nathaniel. He's only mentioned in the Bible a few times. With the writers, they give you this whole backstory. That's really refreshing, but also I think that's what connects the audience to it and what, what connected me to it. It's a gift. You're you're beautiful, beautiful actor. And your soul comes through in these two. Wow. You have a beautiful soul. Thank you for pulling so. me aside and telling me that. Of course. People were very, you know, nicely say, I can't wait to see who you're playing. I can't wait to see your work. My answer is like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so impatient. Once I'll be able to just say it and be like, and put a, a Zorro Z on my, on my chest and be like, you know. <laughs> Meaning it, it looks like something you put on to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Like innocent. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't look like a killer. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. You know, it's being shown now why Jesus chose these specific archetypes uh, for their specific flaws to be shown so that they can be worked out, so that they can be eventually alchemized. Yeah, I just want to make sure you're contrasted with the other people in this scene who are having more serious conversations and I don't want okay, I don't want you to feel heavy either. I want you to feel you always feel like the like, always in a good mood. Yeah. 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 Especially a guy who's trying to he's asking for help, you know? That's a great thing. This is what's so freeing about a show. 
freedom that we have to take our time in developing these characters over multiple seasons. If we would have tried to fit in Matthew's journey from death to life or from broken to healed, from confused to clear in 90 minutes, um, it wouldn't have worked as well. And, and we would have had to make a movie just about Matthew. And to be able to explore this kind of character and show from where he started from, like the bitter guy behind the tax booth saying next, 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 and to just slowly evolving with the facial hair, the new look come, going on, and just you're seeing his heart, you're seeing his personality. I do think that as you're helping her, it should still be functional helping, not necessarily comforting. Okay. You know what I mean? I think comforting is maybe one step too far for Matthew at this point. So moving her hair out of the way. Yeah, you know, he's still not sure. I think helping her is one thing. Comforting her is, might, be, yeah. might be one step too far at this yeah. point. And so I thought it was important to show like, okay, you've been redeemed, but it's still an ongoing and daily effort to stay in a state of peace. He already fixed me once. And I broke again. Not joining the fray, not joining the fight, but at a certain point you have to join the fight to see Andrew muster up uh, the courage in those moments to stand up for what he believes in is really, really fun to play. Just start smaller there and just, you got, you got plenty of time to build up. Okay. It, felt, yeah. it felt like you just got there so fast and then okay. it just became a... Is it all right if I big... get to the place when I'm like, left us starving at camp for two days and, and, and by then I'm, I'm built up, but if I start smaller? Well, the reason that, the problem was when you said starving for two days, you were at full 10. Okay. And then you had to go, or put Jesus on edge, and it, it felt, okay, it yeah, felt yeah. awkward. You know, these are people that have flaws, they have obstacles, they, you know, they get irritated in certain situations, they're, they're joyful about certain situations. They connect differently with, with other people, um, they're human. With every series that has the opportunity to last long enough, there's always going to be this sort of evolution or kind of settling into a character. My wish is always to go further and to try to understand and know the heart of Jesus more deeply. I think that's going to be delightful for the viewers. I think it's going to be delightful for the people watching when they can see that Jesus is playing a whole other game, right? It's something beyond, right, corporal affairs. <laughs> He's Jesus, right? He's talking on another level. I'm saying I don't know what to make of you. That's going to be a lot of people's problem with me. No more bones, Jesus. Follow me. No more draining my talent pool, creating spectacles, crowds. No more meddling. Hmm? I cannot promise any of these things. Ryan and Tyler in Dallas are now writing for us as actors, as opposed to just characters. They're more comfortable writing for us as people, and, uh, and that just makes for a better show. In the, in, the, in the wider take, um, I really liked when you played the Vipers thing even lighter. You were kind of chuckling a little bit like, I heard about that killing him. Do you know what that means? I really like that, so okay. let's, let's go back to that. It's just okay. even lighter. It's just, it just plays well. We have uh, really amazing writers. There's no moments where you think to yourself why and how because everything is there. Everything is laid out so beautifully and makes perfect sense. We're all going to fight behind you. You're all unified. Right? We all agree on you. But sometimes you're away, and during those times, we don't have your authority to defer to. We have my instructions. We have a goal or instruction or someplace to go, but how we get there, how we achieve it, sometimes there's a lot of noise. It makes the work so much easier when you have these images already laid out for you. On your hands. One more. There we go. I'm a mess. <laughs> Good. Good. What would I do without you, Ima? The reason that the show is is working and, and will hopefully continue to work is because 
the audience feels an authentic connection to these people. And the only way that's going to happen is if they see a little bit of the actors, at least some of the actors, in these roles. So go ahead and give that some, no, it's damp. Like really, you know, like when he says, no, it's wet. No, it's damp. Like just lean into it a little bit. Wet is the incorrect word to use in this situation. <laughs> it is actually damp. Dallas and I have not agreed on every thing, but that's not really as important as the response to that, which from him has always been like, okay, well then let's hash it out. Let's figure out what the best way to proceed is. Uh, my job is to show up every day and just put my ideas to the side and just surrender to the moment and, and bring my authentic self to the situation. Action. As this project grows and as we grow within the characters, I think that it'll be like a, a Venn diagram almost. Like there will be not just J Big James and Abe, but Big Jabe. <laughs> a young man that has cerebral palsy as well, and his is even a little more severe than mine, and he said it meant a lot to have that representation on screen. If I had your uh, struggle and I was watching what was happening today. I demand it. I don't know if I should. It just doesn't feel right. Most of the time, people can use their differences or their disabilities or their limp or whatever their limp may be. I think people can use that to inspire and to help, like to use as a tool to help others find purpose or faith. The willingness of my castmates uh, to be there to be with each other, to check in on each other, that goes, that goes further than anything. Uh, and I don't think you can teach that will. You can't teach people to care about each other. You can ask them to, but when it's just born of them, that's something else. That's really special. I haven't seen anyone showing up on set in any department uh, and just showing up because it's their job and they just have to go through the day and get it done and they look forward to Friday and then you know it's 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 not like that it's like when when we work we work and it's like these big smiles you know whether you see the smile or not but like there's it's this attitude man like an hour after being on set in in Utah I knew I could relax and just be me and just be an actor and because everybody from the cast to the crew every everybody is so welcoming makes your job easy because all you can all you have to do is focus on being an actor the more takes we do you might start to feel a you know a, an urge to or maybe a temptation to feel like it's a long scene we're all waiting we've done it so many times people might be getting restless like get rid of all of that and just settle in and be present and don't worry about any of what I was just talking about you know just relax and and have a have a conversation we're gonna do it lots of times and each time I want you to just be feeling totally supported in 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 the patience that's around you does that make sense yes thank you that's kind of like what your the dream is like working on projects that look good and they turn out great uh, but you also have a ton of fun doing it the connection you have with the other actors the, the what you get to build that's my favorite part. In any project I've ever done, I haven't gotten this as close as I am to this cast. It's just a great time. Everyone's just got great per personalities. Everyone's so different and you're, there's, you just laugh. Off screen and within the scenes, there's a generosity among actors where we want to help each other. We, we don't want to steal a scene or we don't want to, you know, there's just, there's a care. There's a real care. The show's not about me. I might be playing Jesus, but I'm, it's not about Jonathan Rumi or anyone else. It's about God. It's about how he impacted the world 2,000 years ago and, and will continue to impact the world. Jews and Gentile at this table? What would have to happen for that to be possible? Something will have to change. Again, for the next couple hours, heavy emotional scene, quiet scene. Let's really, in between takes, do our best to keep it down. Activity-wise, jokey-wise, all that stuff. Just really be present for the next couple hours. That'll be very helpful to me and extremely helpful to the actors. So thanks again. Working on a Dallas Jenkins film is like a complete blessing, whether it's The Chosen or a small independent film. It's always filled with love, I guess. I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. I'm not in this business just to make a show or make movies or use actors and crew members 
for my own means. I feel like it's a calling to, to be Jesus to people. We all want to create the same good product, and I think he's really good at communicating per person how to get there, how to create that, that thing together. Look around, see all these men. Um, I think it can really register that you're in a room by yourself with these guys instead of the disciples. And that's, that should be Simon, that should be Matthew, that should be, you know what I mean? Take your time. I trust his good taste. I feel like that makes me work a little easier. I know he has my back. Look at these performances and that gives you an idea of how strong the director is because they are allowed to do anything that they feel in the moment. And that doesn't happen unless you have a good relationship and you trust the director. And trust is way stronger between friends than it is between boss and employee. That's a line where you can feel free to be more engaged, you know, like you don't have to be looking at her, but I'm just, that's where you can really express yourself. This is why this is important. I don't know if I'm gonna see these people again. Like, so it's okay to take your time and really lean into each of those words there. Okay. Makes sense? When he watches the scenes on the monitor, he's so in tune. I have to admit that he really is, his game is stepping up because he's noticing the most nuanced little things that I'm, do, I can only say for myself, personally, the things that I do. And then when he says it, I kind of realize like, you're absolutely right, I did have that thought. He knows what he wants in a shot, which is crucial, I think, for any director. But he gives us and allows us the freedom to kind of play, and he's open to discussion. Where even if it's not, written into the script or something like that, we can maybe throw a little bit of improv here and there or, you know, do something that we want to do. Everyone is so passionate because I think Dallas is very strongly passionate about this. This is like clearly his lifetime project. He knows exactly what he's doing it for. It comes from a place of instinct, much more than uh, control. Again, in the, in the plan, they don't know who you are. Yeah in the plan, and so you're not trying to hide your face, you're not trying to no, pretend no, 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 that, yeah. I mean, you're picking up your thing, so it's okay to like, sure glance yeah. at them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's not really a reason for you, as the, as the citizen, to stare at them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. kind of what you're saying? So even right. this gesture needs to be very discreet. Um, yes. Yes. Still looking yes. Dels is pretty good at this directing thing. Um, I'm hoping he he continues, uh, you know, learning. Every new episode just keeps getting meaner and meaner. Well, it's been painful, um, fairly excruciating. Not really crazy working with him. It takes a lot of energy, man. I mean, he's terrible. He's the worst human being I've ever met in my life. Um, I just I hate seeing him and his face every day. Action, next group. Action, you guys, go ahead. All right, you guys can start walking this group here. Go ahead. Okay, this section, go ahead, start walking. All right, now everyone, let's go. To take something that, that 2,000 years later is still considered, or still known as the most famous sermon in history, and the words that changed history, the words that were so radical, and we get a chance to kind of recreate it and deliver it again to the world, to way more people than just Jesus was speaking to in that time. We were all kind of like emotional, like backstage getting ready for the big, big shot, you know? And so there's all these thousands of people out there and they look great and they sound great and they're excited and they're cheering. They probably could have CGI'd it and it would definitely, they would find a way to really make it work, but this was so much more powerful. It's not done anymore. You, you look at these movies from 40s, 50s, and it's 2,000 people when it says 2,000 people. There are 2,000 people who have flocked from all over to listen to the words of Jesus speaking up. I mean, there were people showing up from Washington, D.C., Washington, San Diego, uh, Virginia, Michigan. So they're all here backstage as he's about to get ready. So. So right now, let's just bring them out. So guys, come on out. We got everybody. And you look out there and you see this massive crowd and, and we go out and they're all screaming for all of us. 
it felt like we were rock stars. I felt like, you know, the Rolling Stones or something. And it's just, I, 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 I couldn't stop smiling. I, I literally couldn't stop laughing and smiling. It seemed to me like all these people are calling out your name and know you and so much love. It's like you have this wave of like love and good energy coming to you. All right, listen up very carefully. You know how a lot of times in these types of movies, when someone comes out on stage, everyone cheers or everyone stands up. We're doing the opposite, okay? So you guys will be talking to each other. You'll be milling about. When Jesus comes out on stage, you'll all start to slowly see him and you'll all sit down. And that's gonna be the final shot of season two. The crowd is there placed and then we have to do a camera rehearsal just to make sure it goes the way it's supposed to go. And so the first time I'm going through it, I open it up and just like, like a C and it was like, whoa, and I had to turn around. So it just it really, uh, I knew it would, but you, you don't necessarily know exactly when it's gonna happen until it actually happens. Action! I'm just excited to see it, but it's definitely a challenge, but a welcome challenge at the end of the day. And it was a, it was a day, it was a moment. It was overwhelming. I mean, it was just like, it represented so much, so much pain and effort to get us here, but then so much love. It also represented God, uh, and again, doing the impossible, his impossible math. It's great to be a part of something that has a good message. It's great to be a part of something that helps people. There are so many people that it's changed their lives. And isn't that the point of great cinema? Even people that don't believe in anything watch it and are hooked. You can't say that about a lot of things. That's how you know you got something special. Just being able to meet so many people out there that are saying, like, thank you for what you're doing. You're changing lives. You're the reason why I feel more awakened in my life. You're the reason why I'm chasing after things I want to chase after now, and I'm closer to God because of that. So many people love this show so much, and we love that they love this show so much. This is such a dream project for me. And then on top of that, it's finding out the impact it has on people, where it's, it's bringing them hope. I, I, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful for that, you know? A little girl just came up to me who was probably 13 tops, and she starts crying, and she says, last year I was literally about to commit suicide. <laughs> and I watched episode one in Mary Magdalene's story, and it just, she starts crying. <laughs> she's like, she's like, She's like, I'm just watching Mary Magdalene's story and how Jesus came to her and it just really, it's, it literally saved my life. And I still, you can't do this. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, she, she, I mean, she was like this tall. I'm like down on her face. Yeah, it was amazing. So. Are you not supposed to be crying? <laughs> you could, oh, Mary Magdalene cries all the time. You can cry for this one. I genuinely believe and know that every cast member that we have is here for a reason. I can't tell you how many cast members have said that when we cast them, they were going through something difficult, whether it was a spiritual crisis or a career crisis, or they were questioning whether or not they belonged in this business. It's happened multiple times. Hey, listen up, everybody. Literally tens of millions of people around the world are gonna see the work that you've done this year and this season. And I'm very grateful because you've made me so much better and you've made the show so much better than it could ever be and I really appreciate it. And that is a wrap on season two of The Chosen. I love my cast. Amanda and I feel such a huge love for them and we feel like we're in the foxhole together. I genuinely, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do it with anybody else.
I just love that. Um, there were so many pieces of that that I actually hadn't seen because I wasn't part of those conversations with the cast. And so when I got a chance to see it as we were putting this together, um, it was just so cool to hear their thoughts on it and uh, how the season is impacting them. So I hope that you appreciated that. There's so much going into this show that's beyond just the content, um, the connections that we have and, and uh, the work that we're doing together and the impact that the show is having is also impacting us. And so you're such a key part of that. And I really, that's why we do so many behind the scenes things is we really want you to, ha to feel like you're a part of it and that you get a chance to see it as it's being done. We want you to be part of that so that you can trust that we've got uh, this story in, in, in good hands and that we really are surrendering to it and that we've got our priorities straight when it comes to it. Now look what I'm wearing. So while I was talking about it, someone here at Angel was like, hey, I've got a Chosen Army shirt, so let me get you that. So during the documentary, I ran, ran and grabbed a Chosen Army shirt and now I've got one. So this is the one that we brought back. It was here last year for about a couple of weeks. We're bringing it back. We ordered a small amount and when it's gone, it's gone. So make sure that you check out this I Am The Chosen Army shirt. Uh, it's a great conversation starter. And if you see someone on public with it, it's always a great connector. So uh, feeding the 5,000. So as you hopefully know, last time I did a live stream, we announced that if you want to be at the feeding of the 5,000, if you want to be part of the crowd that Jesus feeds, uh, the opportunity is there at the pay it forward amount of nine, is it 999.99 or is it just a thousand? Did we just make it? Did we, did we upgrade it to that extra cent? Cause some people are like, I can't do a thousand, but I can do $999.99. I don't remember what it, what it is, but if you go to the pay it forward, uh, section on, uh, the app, uh, that's the best place to, to go. But if you, you can also go to the chosen.tv. It's uh, uh, Colin, bring that up along the bottom of the screen now if you can. Chosen.tv slash pay it forward or slash PIF. Either one of those will work. That gives you an opportunity. Um, so $1,000 gets you to the Sermon on the Mount. Now, why $1,000? Why can't we just give it for free? Well, of course, uh, 5,000 people is, is a lot, and it costs a lot of money to do this. We want to give you this opportunity to be there. Uh, typically, um, a show like this would use CGI, you know, visual effects to create all these people. Maybe they'd have 100 people there, and then they'd multiply them. Well, we really want you to be there to experience this. We're going to have, like we did last time with the Sermon on the Mount, we'll have singers, we'll have some, you know, for the first half of the day, we can't get a shot off because we've got thousands of people showing up. Um, so uh, it's going to be in Texas. Um, but make sure right now, from last I heard, over two-thirds of the opportunities, over the two-thirds of the slots available have been taken up. Um, and that's just people who haven't yet said who they're going to bring. Because if you, get, if you pay it forward at $1,000, it's actually just a small amount extra to bring your family. So we may be actually close, and we're going to be figuring it out over the next couple of days, we may be actually close to having to cut it off and say that's we're, we're at our capacity. So if you do want to be part of the feeding of the 5,000, which of course you do by paying it forward, which of course will not only help cover the costs of putting on this massive, massive event, but it helps us make more episodes and seasons. So if you want that opportunity, now is the time because it won't, we won't be having this, uh, for, for up, up for, you know, it, it will definitely not last until the end of the year. Sometime soon, the opportunity will go away because we will have all of the slots filled. So um, I, know, uh, I know you want to be there. And uh, so far, again, we've had, I think it's something like over 3,000 people have, have paid it forward at that $1,000 level so that they can be there. And because we haven't yet done the full RSVP, we may be cutting it off soon. So hashtag F5K. Feeding of the 5,000, we've also been hearing, you know, the, the term loaf of palooza uh, because we are bringing our loaves and fish. And this is one of the cool things about this opportunity is that by being there, you are by definition bringing your loaves and fish because you're contributing to the ability to do this show and to get it out to more people around the world. It really is an extraordinary opportunity, and I hope I get a chance to see you there. So I wanted to give you that update. Uh, season three, that is the first question I get. And at the end of this live stream, I'm going to do a quick Q&A. Uh, my team has been assembling the most commonly asked questions in the chats and, uh, and texting them to me. And uh, so I'll be asking, answering some of those questions. The most common question is, when is season three? So I'm just going to go ahead and answer it now. We are hoping to shoot season three in early 2022. Uh, that is the hope. That is the goal. That is our intention. But man, it is hard. Uh, there are so many delays, whether, you know, we're building sets for season three and because of the pandemic, because of global supply chain, lumber, steel, all of that kind of stuff, um, 
you know, real estate, figuring out the lease that, we're, that we need. All of that stuff is taking so much time. And uh, we are at what my wife calls a Red Sea moment, you know, where we do everything we can, then we get to the edge of the Red Sea, and there's nothing left. And all we can do is just hope and pray that God does something, that he parts the, the waters so that we can do it. And we're at that moment right now when it comes to uh, season three. Season three is not even fully financed yet. If you notice in the Pay It Forward section of the app, uh, you'll see that season three is not even fully financed. So that's a big deal too. So uh, again, that's why the feeding of the 5,000 thing matters. The pay it forwards of that are really helpful. But anytime, anytime you pay it forward, any amount, um, it really does help us get there faster. But season three is tough. And right now, uh, my co-writers and I, Ryan Tyler and I, are working on the writing of it. And uh, it's going really well, but it's slow going. Uh, to be honest with you, um, and I'll share this at the end, I could use some prayer. Um, it's hard to focus. It's hard to, we've got so many things going on. And sometimes I sit down to write and I run out of time. And so uh, the writing just needs, I mean, I think sometimes when you're writing something like this, it's, that's this important. Um, you know, I think there's sometimes just a lot of opposition, whether it's spiritual or whatever, it just comes and it just makes it hard to, to get things done. And sometimes I can't even explain it, just it's just really, really hard. And uh, I feel a sense of uh, a, a big weight and responsibility to get this right, um, and which is why I surrender as much as I do, and I try to let God give me as much as, as he's willing to give me for this, because I really want you to continue to be blessed by the project and to be drawn closer to Jesus and to get to know and love Jesus better. But it's hard. And even if this wasn't a Jesus project, it's just hard to write. So uh, it's going well. Uh, I'm really getting excited about season three, but it's, it's, uh, it's tough. But we're, that's what we're working on right now. Before I show you my conversation with Elijah Alexander, who plays Atticus, Season two DVDs. So, so many of you ordered the pre-sale. So we had that premiere edition, which had the booklet in it. Uh, that is no longer available um, because that was the pre-sale edition. But you are starting to get them now. And we've been seeing people post about it. So the season two DVDs now are the, I don't know what term, what do you want to call them, Jeremy? Standard edition. Standard edition. That's so much better than normal. Yeah. Standard kind of feels a little bit more classy. So I'm actually here with Jeremy Niche, who is kind of our DVD guru, he's the one who actually makes sure that it happens, like he actually gets it onto the discs, you know, and then of course they're printed. He doesn't do, do you do the printing too? No, Wouldn't no. surprise me if you were at the factory actually <laughs> pressing the DVDs, that's how much Jeremy does. But uh, he's the one who uh, actually makes sure that the content is as high quality as possible. So the standard edition is now available. It doesn't have the booklet like the pre-sale, but if you are old school, and sometimes I am, I like watching things on DVD. If you want, they make better gifts than obviously a streaming link. So uh, if you're old school, if you've got a grandmother or a mom or a dad who's like, I don't like this streaming thing, I can't cast my TV, how does my internet work? The DVD, they just pop it in and watch it. So the season two DVDs are out, we are shipping them now. Uh, yes, there's always a little bit of delay, shipping times are a little bit longer than normal, but we still are working to get that to you as fast as humanly possible. But they are out now, out now, the people, uh, you, you might've already gotten your season two presale, but the regular, no, not regular, standard edition, the standard edition, it just sounds more classy when I say that, more professional. Standard edition is now available. Season two DVDs, coming out now. We've got the big shipments in and we are getting them to you. So this is now the time for your grandparents to finally be able to watch season two, right? And yes, we are working on the, uh, what are we gonna call the, the special edition? Special edition, which is gonna be crazy. We, 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 we really leveled it up this time around, but that's not coming for uh, several more months. Uh, I, I'd like to say like, three or four more months, but Jeremy's going to go, no, 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 no. It's going to take time to get it right. It's going to be at least three years. No, it's going to be somewhere in between there. But, uh, but if you want the DVDs now, get them right now. Season two, they are available. All right. So after this conversation with Elijah, which I already recorded uh, earlier today, uh, which was just, just great. I know so many of you love Atticus. He's such an intriguing and compelling character. And uh, he had some really great insights on his process of playing a Roman, someone who works for an oppressive and evil regime, how a guy like Elijah, who's really a sweet and tender man, how he gets into a, a character for something like that. And uh, yeah, do we see him eat an apple? We'll see, you'll have to find out. It's gonna be a, gonna be a special surprise. Um, and right after that, I will uh, close with a Q and A. Uh, we got a couple of commonly asked questions from you and uh, also give you an opportunity to pray for us. And uh, I've also got um, yeah, Q&A, Q&A and prayers, what we're coming up with, uh, with some, uh, some of your top questions coming up after this conversation with Elijah Alexander. Check it out. All right, Elijah Alexander, my good friend, 
I have not seen you actually since we started filming, so it is wonderful to see you. Uh, So much has happened since then. We've actually shown all of the scenes that we filmed together, Um, but it's so great to have you on. Uh, This is your first appearance to The Chosen Army, but I first want to talk about your audition. So the first time I met you, of course, during COVID, we couldn't do in-person auditions, which was a real bummer. We were doing them on Zoom. But you auditioned for Atticus the first time. I don't think you'd mind me saying it didn't go great. Uh, and here's why I'm not afraid to say that, because you came back a second time to read for Petronius, and you had a really good read, and I was like, that's great, thank you. And you said, you know, um, I wasn't enamored with my audition last time for Atticus. And I was like, no, no, it was fine. And, you know, but you, you, you know, I was like trying to kind of move on, and you said... I've been thinking about it since last time we did it. And Do you want to try it? Yeah. I, Do you want it? I, I'd love to. I'd love I, to get a slightly different, more sort of in-command take on it, if you have the time. I do. Let's do it. Okay, great. And you read for Atticus again, and whatever happened, I don't know what was the first time versus the second time, but uh, it was it really was great, and you really did em, you know, embody Atticus, and I think you feel like you something clicked. So can you, can you walk me through that? What was it that, because I think people who are watching – don't really do that audition process or don't know much about it, but what was it in your mind that, that changed, if anything? Was it just the fact that we were doing Zoom and so it was just awkward? What was it that kind of clicked with you about this character that made you really want to, to, to dive in? So uh, I would say that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slow and steady. I take my time and I have to uh, really be inspired. I have to find something... Um, that is intimate and personal about the character that is uh, very close to me. And I I will, I'll just say that I found that and Atticus stayed with me. And when you called me in for, to to, uh, audition for a different character, I just, I really felt compelled to um, be front footed about the whole thing and, and uh, show you what I'd come up with you know, with, with Atticus and he still continues to speak to me. It's very, uh, very dear, this character, very dear to my heart and, uh, allows me to express a lot of my natural curiosity and wonder and admiration and respect for, for human beings. You know, he's, Atticus is a very keen observer and, uh, an an empath, you know, he, he really, you know, feels the pulse of, of the people. I mean, that's why he, you know, plays the role as a cohortes urbani for the emperor. That's why, you know, his, his vocation is very much a, a capitalization on his person, his special skills and his, where his, his soul and heart yeah. live. Maybe that's no. more than you wanted, but I, I would say a, a simple answer and a quick answer is time and space, yeah. my friend, time and space. Yeah, and I hadn't I hadn't experienced that before in an audition where, it, but it was just so clear that you had a, a a point of view that you really wanted to get across. And I'm someone who, I like I like to discover things. You know, I I, I prepare quite a bit, but um, I like to discover things. I like to be surprised. I like it when someone has an idea that I didn't necessarily have, which leads me to on set. Um, you're someone who, more than almost anyone I've worked with, really loves to play, loves to discover things as well. Talk me through some of that approach of a lot of Atticus's scenes are by himself, you know, he's because he's just watching. He's not interacting yet. Um, Mm -hmm. But when you show up, how much of it is prepared and how much of it is like if you had a scale or a percentage, how much of you it it is something you've already baked and how much of it is let's find something out. Let's let's discover something while we do this. That's a great question. Well, I have I do have to say that first day. on set with you was one uh, one of the highlights of my life and my career mm. actually there was uh right away there was such trust and respect i was i felt so welcomed and so valued the crew and everyone from from every single person on that set and that ultimately i think always produces the the best work out of me you know feeling safe feeling like i'm in a loving and trusting environment um, so I can play, so I can explore. But in terms of like s- stuff being baked, I wait till I get 
on set. I actually love being surprised. That creates spontaneity. It creates um, excitement, you know, because yeah. one of the things that's the most exciting is is witnessing things for the first time. I mean, that's what makes great TV, what makes great film. Um, but you've just, you gave me, you, you're such a great a natural leader. You gave me the, the room uh, and the encouragement. You know, you said, look, if this word doesn't fit, try something that makes more sense. And so we were able to uh, play with the language a little bit, which is always really mm -hmm. important because we're all figuring out um, who these characters are together. You know, that there's something written, but until an actor gets a hold of it, and until actors are interacting with each other, you don't really see how that language is living, right? So you gave me great uh, freedom and respect, and you know it was, it's it's easy. It's a it's a the best set I've ever. Oh done. wow! You're playing a guy who has done um, and works for a. Uh, multiple evil things, really, when you look back on it. I mean, uh, of course, each of these people don't believe that what they're doing is evil. They believe that what they're doing is efficient or just or whatever. What's it like to prepare or inhabit a character who, at the end of the day, is doing some, you know, or at least responsible for or, at, at, you know, uh, endorsing or supporting a pretty brutal and oppressive regime? Because uh, you, Elijah, are a very kind person. Um, and so where is that on that spectrum of Atticus being a human being, but also working for uh, an oppressor that sees a lot of people as some subhuman? How do you find that? So when I approached Atticus, it was completely without judgment. And I also, um, and that's enabled me to... Um, bring him to life in a very human way. Also, you know, we are, uh, something I was reminded of in a workshop the other day, you know, we're, we are all products of our afflictions. You know, we're products of our uh, childhood, of our uh, upbringing. And, you know, we seek out vocation, employment, our mighty purpose, sort of based on dealing with those afflictions, you know, dealing with that suffering or not. When I am Atticus, I'm fulfilling a mighty purpose. And what I'm doing is considered for the greater good. You know, my, as a cohortes urbani, you know, Atticus, is, the jo his job is to protect and serve. When I see zealotry run rampant, violence in the streets, assassination attempts on Roman lives, my job is to thwart it out, is to find it out and stop it. Is to, is to, I'm a peacemaker. When I'm taking on a role of, you know, emperor's elite enforcer, I'm not thinking that I'm part of a dark, evil empire that's, I'm actually looking for the light in everything I do. I've actually created an entire, that has nothing to do with this, what's scripted, um, an entire personal history for Atticus, you know, his own, um, just through my imagination. And, and given what he does and how he does it, there, there's always a reason. Right. If you look back, you know, there's always a reason. So I look back. I look back and I find out where that person hurts, where his pain is and was, and um, how he... Um, compensates for it or how he overcomes it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So as we wrap up here, I want to ask you one more question, but it, it, it's very important that at some point in, when you answer it, that we get to see... Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say, the, 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 uh, the fans aren't going to be happy if they don't get to see uh, uh, the, the, the Atticus signature. Uh, the, the, this interview is making me hungry. Yes, so, good, exactly. Please um, forgive me. Yes. <laughs> have um, you had lunch? I, I have not yet, but I'm going to now because uh, watching Atticus means uh, rousing the hunger inside you. So um, as you watch season two and as you experience the reaction from the fans, what was your favorite scene from season two to watch, even though you're inside it a lot, but just stepping back, 
um, you know, whether it was a scene you were in to kind of see, wow, this actually looks different than I assumed or it turned out better than I thought or whatever that is, but then also just uh, the, the reaction that you've been able to experience from the, from the viewers. It has to be, you know, because, again, you're playing – you're playing a bad guy, quote unquote. You're, you know, I know he's not mm-hmm. bad in, 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 in your mind as you play him, but um, but the the fans are so intrigued. They're wondering who you are, where you're going. I mean, just it's got to be rewarding to see that. I, I was really uh, uh, pleasantly surprised to see uh, episode four with all that action and you know all that build up because you had talked so much about how it was one of the hardest scenes you've ever had to shoot, and there was so much going on, but. It, what was great about it is that it was so specific in the storytelling. You know, when that bale of hay is lit up on fire, it's telling a story. It's not, there's nothing gratuitous. There's nothing um, wasted. And I, I really feel that way about the entire, this entire series. Nothing is wasted, not a frame, not a single frame. So, um, but if I had to say my favorite, the, the last scene really was so uh, cumulative Right. It was so full. Yeah, we get a, and, we, we get a state so, of the union of everybody, you know, like everyone's yeah. gathering, including the ones, you know, yeah. I know you love working with Kirk uh, as Gaius, but we get to see yeah. Atticus and Gaius arriving and going, all right, here we go. Let's see how this goes. In the midst of all this beauty of, of what Jesus is about to say, there's still this undercurrent of tension. I agree. And so, so very full of promise, you know, right. promise. We know the Sermon on the Mount is, you know, it's, it's going to come, but what else, right. what's going to come of it? Right. You know, what is going to be the reaction, not only of the crowd, but of the Romans. Right. So, uh, it's just so full of suspense and promise and, um, you know, <laughs> that's, I have to, you know, when I start, it's hard to stop because <laughs> I, I started with the granny Smith and now I've got the red delicious <laughs> I've also got some Bartlett pears. <laughs> I mean, it's so, this is so, it just connects me. Yeah. Well, you know? And every time, Dallas, every time we did a scene, we would talk about, is this another Atticus eating moment or do we need to give that a break? And most of the time we aired on the side of the former. And then it became a, the, the question, is it an apple? Is it a pear? Is it figs? Uh, so it, uh, I, is it a date? Yeah, exactly. I think, I think uh, for me, um, it, it, it is kind of a visual metaphor of, of wherever Atticus goes, he is, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to get too specific about, you know, you know, too literal, but there is a bit of like, he is chewing up wherever he's going. He, when Atticus is there, he is, you know, again, this is, this, this might be a little too on the nose, but he's, he's eating what he's seeing, you know? And so it just felt, it just felt natural. I don't know. I can't, I don't even know if I can exactly explain why, but I know you and I instantly were like, yeah, he should be eating. And I think also it communicates that in the midst of all this uh, really harshness, I mean, this is an oppressive regime and you are a key part of it, that you're still so comfortable. You've been doing it so long that as you're solving the world's problems, you can be eating and be, and, and it's totally cool. One of the things for me to make this all make sense, you know, um, it's too simple to say Atticus is hungry, but I love what you said. There's a, there's a devouring, there's a consumptive quality about, about this character, but also to be calm under pressure, to um, activate that equanimity. Mm-hmm. You know, there, he, there's a lot of training that goes into that. And I think this is really a symbol for so much. I mean, and some of it is very deeply personal. Because I've had, you know, when you give me, when you give an actor something like this, it's, right. we have to make sense of it for ourselves. Right. You know, a writer may think one thing when he's, you know, he writes Atticus is chewing, eating a date or eating an apple in the mm-hmm. scene. Uh, the director has a different idea, mm-hmm. but an actor has to make it m- make sense for himself, him or herself. Otherwise it looks um, uh, like an affectation, right? It right, looks... Right, right. Um, phony right. it's not authentic so i've come up with many reasons <laughs> but but um for myself that stem back to a childhood and stuff that we can go into maybe in the next interview <laughs> when i'm eating the pear in times of high stress atticus eats that's 
part of the process that allows him to be at ease. It's a comforter. Yeah, for sure. It's a comforter. For sure. It's a sublimation. And it's it's actually making me feel very uh, much more comfortable now talking to you because, you know, one gets nervous talking to the, <laughs> the director. I, don't, I doubt yeah. that's true. So this really helps me. Yes, yes, good. Um, well, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll close with, if, if you have anything to share with the viewer who, uh, who have you know who responded so well to Atticus? We'll, we'll we'll go ahead and close with that. It's been so amazing um, and surprising, actually, a little unexpected to um, to get the kind of uh, response to this um, character. A very positive response. I've had a couple amazing artists do uh, portraits of Atticus mm-hmm. and. Thank you so much uh, for all of the uh, support. It's really overwhelming and very touching. And I actually, I do my best to try to respond to everybody. Um, and like I said, I, my, my community has expanded uh, in ways that I never could have imagined. It's good because it's a, a project I really believe in and I'm bringing my um, everything that's best uh, in me to this project because I believe in it. Um, you know, my work is a, a form of prayer. It's through the, the love and support of this community that I've ha- had a renewed sense of uh, purpose mm-hmm. and a renewed sense of faith, um, my own personal faith. I guess this amazing support and love from the community has really invigorated mm-hmm. me. It's uh, overwhelming and like I said unexpected and it's creating connections um, globally with with people who are sharing and now I'm sh- able to share things with uh, devotees across the world and it's just it's been That's a awesome. gift That's truly a gift well brother it's so good to see you and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into the work with you uh, early 2022 hopefully where we can dig into Atticus a little bit more. We've got some fun stuff. I mean, we're writing season three right now. I've got, got a couple fun things in store for Atticus uh, that I'm looking forward to doing, uh, to working Good. with you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us uh, today. And uh, I know the, I know the fans are looking more, looking forward to see more of where Atticus is going. Thank you, brother Dallas. Much love to yep, you. We'll talk, looking forward yep, to seeing we'll you soon. on set soon. Yep, and we'll uh, soon, stay hungry. Right. Stay hungry, yes. my friends. Stay hungry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't he cool? I, I, I loved um, what, he, what, he, what he talked about with uh, the eating of the apple is not just some little fun, quirky thing that we do. It actually has something to say about who Atticus is. And so that was a fun thing that we kind of discovered together. But I, I always want you to get to know the people behind this uh, or even the people in front of it sometimes, you know, our actors. Um, I just think it really gives you some, some great insights into how uh, the, the, the show is impacting us as we do it. And uh, as you can tell, um, we, we are really taking this seriously. Um, we have fun, but this is one of the highest callings of our lives. And uh, one of the greatest opportunities that we've ever had is to bring you this show. And, uh, and so it's important for me to get, for you to get to know who's doing it. I want to read this note to you before we close. Um, this is really special to me because I want you to see the different ages and different types of audiences that are being impacted by what you do. Um, when you buy the gifts, when you uh, pay it forward, um, it matters. Um, this is from a woman named Elizabeth. I wanted to share this with you. My daughter is 17 and goes to a private high school which went all digital this year. All books and work are on laptop. Today they lost their internet connection for almost two hours. She happened to have her large format iPad in her backpack and all the kids were bored. So instead of drawing on it, she opened her chosen app that we had installed on the iPad because again, you can still connect through, you know, sell, sell. All the kids gathered around to watch almost two full episodes. Teacher thought it had great historic value and lessons. The other teens loved it, mixed backgrounds and religions all. When she left school, she said several of them had already downloaded the chosen app on their devices too. Thank you for reaching our teenagers. I think God cut their internet today. Perhaps, but what a great opportunity. But again, that's what you are doing. Um, I never expected, I mean, I, one of my great hopes with the show was that it would actually reach teenagers because 
my kids, I have four kids, 2018, 16, and 14, and it's hard for them to, you know, it's hard to get them to watch like Bible stuff, you know, because sometimes it's boring and, uh, you know, they're com- we're competing with so many more exciting things. And uh, so, you know, my, one of my goals and hopes was that the show would actually reach teens and even younger. Um, and when, we, when you hear that, that at this school, people who aren't even necessarily believers who love the show, teenagers love the show, it's just so cool. And I want you to know, again, that this, the ability to do the app, the ability to reach uh, outside the system and get directly to people uh, in different ways is really exciting. And so I wanted you to know that as we get into this. So I'll an- a- answer your questions in just a second. Quick recap at thechosengifts.com. My final time I will sing this www.thechosengifts.com. I like to do little twists to the tune every now and then. The ear hole gator is the most comfortable. If you're going to have to wear a mask during this time, this is by far the most comfortable. The teal is back, which is why I'm wearing it. I've got my Chosen Army shirt underneath it. All of these things we have in limited quantities. So that's why we have so many tonight, because you will probably find that you run that we've run out of a couple things. So I want you to have some options. And then we've got, uh, oh, the bag that I... The chosen tote bag. Not for me, but maybe for you. Um, and then uh, don't forget about the opportunity for the feeding of the 5,000. Hashtag F5K, feeding of 5,000, your opportunity to be there. I really want, I want to see you if, if at all possible. Um, so I already answered the most common question, which is when can I watch season three? Season three will be out next year at some point, um, but takes time, takes time to make stuff. Takes time to write it, takes time to make it, takes time to build sets, takes time to get permission to build sets. All of that stuff takes a lot of time. I'm doing, we're going, we, we feel a sense of urgency. We're doing it as fast as we can, but it will be sometime next year. But the Christmas special coming up will hopefully tide you over because we've got this huge Christmas special. That's why I'm in Utah. Got some fun announcements about that coming up soon. When will we be able to listen to the season two soundtrack? Very good question um, because the season two soundtrack is fantastic. It's probably going to be somewhere between three to five weeks from now. It will be officially launched on all of the places where you can get your music. This is a good opportunity, though, to get the Season 1 soundtrack. We hear from people all the time who listen to it while they're driving, listen to it while they're working out. It's just a really, it kind of takes them to that place. It really does remind them of Season 1 and remind them of the scenes that uh, impacted them so greatly. So the Season 2 soundtrack coming out soon. But as you know, the full version of the song Trouble the full version is at the very top of the closing credits at the end of season two. So you go to, if you go in the app right now or on the DV, season two DVDs that, uh, that, are, that you can get uh, in the closing credits, you just go to the end of uh, the season finale and you can hear that full version of the song Trouble, which is really awesome. Uh, when will my language be available? Uh, the languages, foreign languages, uh, will be subtitled in the app. We've got many of them. We've got an extraordinary volunteer translation team. Those are going to be up soon. I don't have an exact date for you, but they are going to be there. So I promise you, I mean, our goal is hundreds and hundreds of languages for the entire show, and we're working on that right now. And uh, a lot of our volunteer translation team has already done all the translation work. It's just a matter of getting the subtitles into the app. Our engineers here at Angel Studios are working on that actively. So it will be soon. Uh, And then this question sounds like, how can I be a volunteer extra? Uh, Can I be in the feeding of the 5,000? So I've explained to you how you can be in the feeding of the 5,000. That's through Pay It Forward. Um, But if you want to just be an extra, unfortunately, you'd probably need to live in Texas or Utah and then apply through the normal channels. Um, Obviously, we just can't have everybody um, showing up. So we do have an extras coordinator. So just keep an eye out on social media when we're filming season three and uh, for, for those opportunities. But most likely you're gonna need to be living where we f- are filming, unless you wanna come in and spend a week uh, just for the opportunity to be an extra, but we'll give you an opportunity. Uh, we'll make sure that you, that you know about what those opportunities are when they happen. Uh, so yeah, um, listen, uh, I always wanna close with just letting you know where we're at and uh, I, we're always authentic. And I just wanna let you know that we are in what we call a Red Sea moment. Um, I feel like whether it comes to building the sets or whether it comes to writing the season, everything just seems to be difficult right now. Um, personally for me too, um, just with my family, we just moved to Texas a couple months ago, settling in two of my kids in new schools. Um, I, it's been hard for me to wake up and just have a relaxed day. It's been hard for me to catch up. Um, it's been hard for me to um, enjoy this, to be honest with you. I'd love to just say, this is so fun, and oh my gosh, God is so good, and just think of all the blessings we're receiving. That is true. That is absolutely true. I feel like this is the opportunity of a lifetime, and so many of us feel like that. 
Um, just this week when we were on the set for the filming of our Christmas special, we were like, can you believe what we get a chance to do? This is extraordinary. Um, and it is. But um, with that, it's really hard too. And it's hard to find time to enjoy it. It's hard it, just from a purely, um, I don't know what, I don't know what word to use, from, just from a rested perspective. It's just hard to get rest. It's hard to, we, we, just, we just feel such, so much weight to get. The first question I asked is, when is season three coming out? When is season three coming out? And uh, that's, you know, I mean, I understand it, but it, it just, it, it's just, it's a lot of pressure. And so um, I don't want to always just put on a happy face for you and act like this is all just fun and games and joy because we get to, um, we get to do this great opportunity, which, which it is a great opportunity, but it's really, really hard. So I could use your prayers. The show could use your prayers. Uh, there are a few things going on right now that feel like, um, you know, could be big hurdles to the show. And so whether you, uh, I know not everyone can pay it forward. So paying it forward is a huge help and purchasing the gifts is a huge help and spreading the word through the app and clicking that share button in the app and clicking all, all the things we ask you to do so much. But I think just as important as any of that, and if not more important, is just prayer. So if you could just, uh, it would be appreciated if you could just remember to just kind of lift this project up in prayer because it's still, to get to the notes that I read to you, it requires a lot of work. So I don't want to close with anything other than that. So... Thank you for joining me tonight. It really does mean a lot. Remember, it is not your job to feed the 5,000. It is only your job to provide the loaves and fish. And I will talk to you soon. Throw me like this down in the water. Watch the mud rise up. Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter, pour me in your cup. Should've known we'd bring trouble, and trouble gonna find you here. Trouble. I was one way when you found me, I was not the one you see. And the only thing that happened was this stranger in between. And you can say your eyes are open. Your hands are clean Till the wind blows in The dirt kicks up in ways You've never seen Them coins, I know where you got them. Kiss me, kiss me by. I should have known we'd bring trouble. Trouble gonna find you here. Yeah, trouble.